What's up guys? Thank you for tuning in and welcome to a new series on the channel that I'm calling Budget vs Beast. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications and we'll do future episodes where we'll go through other products. But as you've probably seen by the thumbnail and the title, we have a face off between the RGB mouse pad you probably want and the RGB mouse pad your wallet would probably be happier with. This one, this is the Luxcom's RGB XL mouse pad. This is widely considered to be the best budget mouse pad. At $22, it's pretty compelling offering. This one, this one is the Steel Series QCK Prism XL. This is widely considered to be the best RGB mouse pad. No qualifier, no nothing. The best that money can buy right now. And it takes a lot of money. It's uh, $60. Yes, you heard me. $60 for a mouse pad. So what I want to do for you today is compare the two like for like and give them a rating in the following categories. The looks, the connection to the computer, um, how they feel if they perform well as an actual mouse pad, you know, what they were originally designed to be. Uh, living with it and getting it dirty. And then finally, the one that you probably care most about, the colors and how they perform. But at the end of the video, I want to come back to the question, is it $40 better? Because it's $40 more expensive. And which one should you listen to? Your wallet or your heart? So welcome to Budget vs Beast episode one. Let's get into the video. So before we get into rating them, let me take you through some of the basics. While both mouse pads are 11.8 inches tall, the Prism is longer at 35.43 inches compared to the Luxcom's 31.5 inches. So make sure they fit where you intend to put them. I couldn't find any warranty information on the Steel Series website or on Amazon, but Newegg had it listed for one year, so we'll go with that. On Amazon, the Luxcom states, lifetime breakage warranty, but I'm skeptical on being able to actually claim on this. Drop a comment below if you've had any experience getting a warranty return. Getting into the looks of the mouse pads, neither one of them came too wrinkled at the edges, which is a common problem for XL RGB mouse pads, but they did need a slight bit of training. Other than that, of course they look similar, but it's in the small differences that make a big impact. The Prism's control unit looks sleek and sexy with the gloss steel series logo on a matte black surface. It's a thing of beauty. Comparing this to the Luxcom's logo and the control button, which stands out like a little person in a pediatrics ward, it's a shame. I really wouldn't have minded the look of the Luxcom if it was black print, but it's just too bold, especially for a lesser known brand. When it comes to the cable, this is more difficult. The cable sticks out the side of the Luxcoms, which looks a lot less clean compared to the Prism. But then again, it is a braided cable, which does look much better. Neither one of them get a five as the control unit is placed to the side, which looks a bit silly. So that means that the Prism gets a four and the Luxcom gets a three, primarily due to the white writing. So let's move on to connections. I do prefer the look of the braided cable on the Luxcom. And I thought that was that. We didn't need to bring it up again but the rubber cable on the prism is significantly easier to train and keep tidy. This is an important note for those who care about ultimate cable management. However, the Luxcom cable is removable, which has two benefits. You can cut a small hole into the desk to root the cable and cover it up, and you can also replace the cable if it dies. Of course, the more expensive one has an integrated cable. If the cable has an issue, that's a $60 issue, not a $6 issue. Please, if anybody from SteelSeries is watching, let's fix that in a future revision. Another benefit that the Luxcom has due to its design is that you don't have to potentially use a limited USB port to unlock all of its features, as there's no data connection to the computer. The Luxcom can just be run off a typical wall wall. This potentially is a really nice thing to have for some people. The Prism doesn't work at all in this setup and must be connected to a computer. Therefore, I'm giving the Prism a 3 and the Luxcom a 4, as you can replace the cable and power it off a standard power adapter. So let's move on to the feels. Both mouse pads are great design pieces, but are they any good as mouse pads? Keeping their light tubes secured in place, both Luxcoms and the Prism uses stitching. The stitching is noticeable, coarse even, but having used both mouse pads for a week, typing this script, playing games and editing videos, you probably want to know the outcome of that. Do I feel the stitching? Am I getting a rash that people are afraid of? Fortunately, um, not from the mouse pads. I only actually notice the stitching when I'm focused and thinking about it. But otherwise, I haven't noticed it when I'm focused on my work or while gaming, and I'm happy with both of them. Both the Luxcoms and the Prism have a rubber base that sticks excellently to the desk, and both use a soft cloth texture that allow my mice to glide effortlessly across them. But to the touch, the Prism does feel slightly softer and more premium. I wanted a way to quantify this, if the Prism is actually better than the Luxcom at being a mouse pad. 
So for this, we can use the Mionix Nails software from my mouse. This includes the surface detection analysis tool. This won't really tell us how good they are in a wider sense, as we don't have a pool of data to compare against, but we can see if my mouse thinks one is better than the other. Running the mouse analysis tool three times on each, the Prism scored a 60% every time, and the Luxcom scored 50% every time. With my previous mouse pads, I've never seen this go above 60%, so take this for what you will, but the Prism does seem to be preferred by my mouse sensor. Although the stitching doesn't actually bother me, I can't give either of them a 5 because of it. Therefore, the Prism gets a 4 and the Luxcom gets a 3 because of the less soft texture and the lower mouse score. On to the living with it category. Simulating the inevitable. Fortunately, if you get crumbs embedded into the fibres of the mouse pads, both the Prism and the Luxcoms are easy to clean with a lint roller. And any spills that occur away from the control unit won't cause any issues with the lighting, as the light tubes themselves contain no electronics. In fact, I would probably recommend wetting the mouse pad and wiping it down after you've used the lint roller. Both the Prism and the Luxcoms gets a 5 in this category before we move on to colours and controls. I can tell you now, the Prism is clearly going to win this section as this is where it shines, pun intended. But you'll see that the Luxcom still stands strong. Both illuminate the entire area well, sending light from the control unit through the clear tubes. Both are visible in the day and both suffer from the same issue of light being less intense in the middle section and more intense by the control unit and corners due to how they illuminate. The Prism is brighter, there's no denying that but not significantly brighter. Starting with the Luxcom's controls, it has 11 different color settings that allow you to cycle through using the squidgiest button I have ever felt. On a scale of one to 10, the tactility is a strong nope. Does anybody remember those rubber popper toy thingies? Yeah, those. It actually feels like I'm pressing one of those. Anyway, you have static light modes in red, green, blue, purple, which is more of a pinky purple, but I like that. Cayenne, yellow, and white, which does look very light blue instead of white. Can we take a second to appreciate Luxcom's marketing material? Good job, Luxcom's. Moving on, we also have color modes of breathing, which also color cycles, and wave, a smooth and pleasing color cycle. When I'm reviewing a product, I like to look at the marketing material to make sure that I've got the names the company chose for certain things correct. With Luxcoms, things are just missing from their marketing material. I've actually covered every mode that they've listed, but there are two more. So I guess I get to make up whatever name I decide for them. This is a mode that I like to call Disco Disco Party Time, and its brother, Slower Disco Disco Party Time. You're welcome, Luxcoms. Overall, this gives the Luxcoms a good all-round RGB offering. A static red, green, and blue, as well as a color cycle mode, are generally a given in budget RGB anything. But having the extra disco disco modes, and including static purple, yellow, cayenne, and white, means that it will match many more desks. Despite the soggy feeling button and the marketing material mess, Luxcoms have done a pretty impressive job here. Moving on to the Prism, the biggest benefit of the Prism is the software in SteelSeries Engine 3 that allows you to control the Prism with much more customizability. Comparing to the Luxcom's seven predefined colors, the Prism uses manually defined RGB or hex values, which gives you access to the full 16.7 million color range. This means that you're not limited to a specific blue or green like the Luxcoms, but you can set the exact color for your setup. Ironically, after you all listen to my bad pun about how the Prism shines, it's worth noting that, unlike the Luxcoms, the prism can actually be dimmed or set completely off, which is a nice inclusion if you're looking for softer lighting. Within the software, you can set the upper and lower zones independently and choose custom colors in steady, a static light mode, color shift, a color cycle mode, and a multicolor breathe mode, while also having quick access to disable the lights. Not only can you choose the exact color, as mentioned before, but you can customize even further by adding and removing keyframes and adjusting the time duration. This means that you can really fine tune the exact color and lighting to match your setup. Similar to my Corsair keyboard, I've gone for a mix of pink and purple that intertwine, making for a really beautiful effect that complement one another in my opinion. The Prism software is almost great. If you're watching this steel series, fix two stupid things you overlooked. It's great that you can drag a keyframe away to delete it, that's nifty and all, but don't have it at the expense of right-clicking for a context menu with a delete option. That's just basic usability. And when I select a color, I shouldn't have to back out and go back in just to have it appear in my recents. I'm sorry, but who hasn't picked up on that? Otherwise, SteelSeries has done a pretty good job with a mostly intuitive and easy to use interface. When it comes to unplugging and replugging the mouse pads, 
Only the prism remembers the RGB settings when it's replugged into the computer. Unfortunately, this is only as long as the SteelSeries engine software is running. It's not a problem, but it does mean that your lighting profile is not saved to the device. And if you swap your mousepad to another computer or the SteelSeries engine software isn't running, it won't remember your beautiful settings and will default to color cycle, which is a shame. I feel like this is less of an issue for the Luxcons, as, although it doesn't remember either, you only have to cycle through a few predefined profiles, whereas setting up the Prism is much more involved. So this gives the Prism a 4 and the Luxcon a 3. Now it's time to answer the question, is the Steel Series worth the extra $40? Does it offer that much value compared to the Luxcons? Given the fact that it's bigger, it's brighter, it's better performing, it's ridiculously more customizable. Honestly, I thought I'd be telling you guys that it was worth the extra $40. And this is me going into this whole thing. And the reason for that is I have a very specific color layout. This pink is very hard to match without going in and entering hex values. And I thought for that reason that I would be choosing the Steel Series and spending that extra $40. But now that I've actually used, installed, and played around with the Luxcoms too, the colors are close enough and it really did look good at a fraction of the cost at just over $20. So if it was me, I would probably keep that $40 and look to spend it elsewhere in my setup. With that said, as I do have both, the Steel Series is going to be the one that will 100% remain on my desk. It is better in almost every single way. And if you did go for that because you needed those customizable color options, or you just wanted more control over it, then you won't be unhappy with that purchase at all. So many thanks for watching Budget vs. Beast episode one. Get subscribed so you don't miss any future episodes. Check out the links to both of these guys in the video description below. Don't forget to comment, hit like, and share the video out before you leave. And guys, I'll see you in the next video.